So we are doing a live cook with me tonight. And if you are watching this on the replay, I just want to let you know that if you want to make sure that you're here live when this happens, so you can be here in real time and ask questions and hang out with everyone, then make sure that you ring that bell, click that little bell next to the subscribe button, and then you will get notifications from my channel. So then you will be notified when I'm live and you can be here live if that's what you want to do. Um, also, if you're watching on the replay, we're just going to be hanging out for a little bit before people get here, give some people some time to show up. So um, you can hang tight for that or you can feel free to skip ahead or do whatever you want. Okay, for those of you who are here live, I see we have a few people, more people coming on right now. Hello, I hope you're having a good morning or afternoon or evening or wherever you are. Um, let me know that you're here, say hi, tell me where you're watching from maybe and how your day's been going. We're making dinner and we've got a lot of veggies to prep, but hopefully it's gonna go fairly quickly and you guys are gonna get to see how to cut up a lot of different vegetables. And then of course I have my tablet here um, as always just so I can see the chat when I have my phone turned down so I can see what you guys are saying when I'm chopping and stuff um, but say hello if you're here let me know how you're doing I've had a pretty good day today you might also see this cut thing on my chest if you watched my last video where I talked about that new study um, with coffee and can coffee help you live longer and all that kind of stuff um, I mentioned this but I'm okay. One of the cats just scratched me by accident. It wasn't malicious, um, but it was pretty gnarly when it happened. This actually looks really good. Like, if you guys had seen it when it happened, it looked like a horror movie. Seriously, it was like someone had tried to slice me open or something. It was, it was pretty terrible. Um, Kind of Vegan says, I'm still stuffed from yesterday. Okay, yes, so for those of you who aren't in the U.S., yesterday was Independence Day, the 4th of July, so we had lots of celebrating and lots of good food. That's actually going to come into play a little bit in tonight's meal, but we'll get to that later. Nita says, hello, darling, how are you? I'm great, Nita, thanks for asking. I hope you're doing well, too. Um, and I hope that everyone had a happy 4th of July if you were celebrating yesterday. Um, Nita says, you need use neoprene, it will help it heal and no scar. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out, I put, um, some neosporin on it when it first happened to try to keep it from getting infected and stuff, and that seemed to help it heal as well, and I've been trying to moisturize, but I've got a couple scratches down here too. Right now, they're kind of at that stage where they don't hurt so much anymore, they're not really sore, but they are itchy because they're healing, so hopefully I won't have a really nice slice down the center of my chest, but, um, some, oh, you meant Neosporin, okay, there you go. Some of you might be able to see right here, I have a scar on my face. You can see it in certain light, it's not super obvious, but like right there is where it goes down my face. That is from a cat scratch when I was little. There was one of my cats was up in the tree and I was like, no, come down, kitty. You know, I was like really scared that something bad was gonna happen to it. And the cat jumped down and landed on my face <laughs> and scratched my face. And my mom said that there was blood everywhere. I was really disappointed as a child after she cleaned it up and told me that it had looked so horrific. I was like, why didn't you let me see it? That sounds awesome. Um, but yeah, so it's not super apparent, but if you know it's there, you can kind of see. I have a little scar on my face right there. So that's the thing. Okay, well, I'm gonna get started on the cooking. Ooh, and we have some rice boiling. Let me set the timer for that. So uh, we're doing rice bowls tonight. So I've already gotten some brown rice started here. Um, on the stove top and I have the oven preheating because we're gonna be roasting some vegetables so that's happening in the background um, and we're gonna start chopping things so I need to get a wet paper towel because we have some mushrooms we need to clean up so I'm right here with you talk amongst yourselves don't go anywhere I'm just gonna get this paper towel and then we can start cleaning up mushrooms and getting them nice and pretty and chopped up so get that okay so I just got a paper towel here you could use a damp cloth or whatever you want to use um and I just got part of it wet and I wrung it out so it's not like sopping wet and we're going to use this to clean our mushrooms so I have a couple packs of mushrooms this is some that's left over from another dinner and then I have another pack here because I want a little bit more than this so we're going to be roasting up vegetables and this is the first one that we're going to do Nita says I love a meal in a bowl I do too it's um it's just like a really nice meal to make and this is a really good meal for when you have a lot of little bits that you need to use up in your fridge or you don't know what to make and you need to figure something out 
And it's also good if you are serving a lot of people with a lot of different preferences because everyone gets to customize the meal to make it exactly what they want. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on um, with this recipe. But if you watched my latest What I Eat in a Day uh, video, then this meal is gonna look a little familiar to you because this is what I actually had for dinner in my latest What I Eat in a Day. And someone in the comments asked about that meal and wanted a little more info. Um, so I thought maybe this, would, I mean, you know, I kind of gave them a quick comment, but I thought showing it might be a little bit better. And this is a meal that we make a lot. And I haven't done, I think I did a live cook with me of this type of meal maybe a year ago when I first started doing these. So it's been a while. So I thought, you know what, this would be a good one to do, especially because it is something that I make a lot. So if you guys are curious, excuse me, I'm burping. <laughs> if you guys are curious as to what I'm eating, then um, this is something that we have a lot. So right now I'm just wiping off the mushrooms. Um, I'm doing this rather than running the mushrooms underwater because one, the dirt can kind of stick and so just rinsing them doesn't necessarily really work. But also the mushrooms can get really waterlogged because they're that kind of like spongy texture. So doing this makes it so that they don't get, you know, waterlogged and then end up steaming instead of roasting, which is what we want to happen. So I'm just wiping these off. And this is a really great activity if you have little ones. Um, in the kitchen to help get them involved. Maybe they're a little too young to use a knife Then this is something that they can do is wipe off mushrooms And it's very helpful if you do have someone who can help you do this and it makes the process go a lot faster And you know, it's really important to get kids involved in the kitchen right from the beginning uh, Just so they can learn those important cooking skills that they're gonna need because they are gonna be You know making their own food one day and so they need to know how to do this stuff but also to help them learn about the different foods that your family eats um, and to be familiar with them and to just feel comfortable around them and be more willing to try different things and all that kind of stuff okay so we got that pack cleaned up now we're going to move on to the next one and a lot of you know if you have been hanging around here for a little while that mushrooms are one of jason's favorite things and if you don't know Jason's my husband um, and he loves mushrooms they're one of his favorite foods and in the past year or so I've really been trying to be more aware of incorporating mushrooms into more of our meals because he does like them so much and I don't think about it because I don't dislike them but I don't really like them either they're not one of my favorites um, but I was like you know what Jason really likes these so I've been buying them a lot more basically every week um, for the past few months and I think he's really appreciated that because they are something that he really likes oh okay so our rice has been boiling for about five minutes so now i'm going to turn it back to a simmer and we're going to let that simmer partially covered for about 30 minutes if i can set the timer um oh wait cancel timer off i started going into hours sorry i know you guys are over there and i'm over here and you can't see me okay timer 30 minutes, come on. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that's going, we're gonna let that simmer for about 30 minutes and do that while I prep more mushrooms. The never ending mushroom prep. And feel free, of course, in the comments if you guys have any questions, um, whether it's cooking questions or nutrition questions or, you know, like, What's my favorite kind of eyeshadow questions? Whatever. <laughs> we can talk about whatever. Um, but the mushrooms are a bit tedious. This is also something that you could do like ahead of time. So we're doing this bowl type meal. And so I'm prepping all the veggies right now. But this would be great if you had some leftover veggies. Maybe you roasted up some mushrooms or some vegetable, other vegetables for a different meal. Um, this is a type of meal where you can incorporate those leftovers or you can make them as I am right now specifically for this meal. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're working our way through the mushrooms. This is probably the most boring way to start a live stream. <laughs> um, in the future says, what are your thoughts on brown rice versus white rice? Okay, that's a good question. Um, now, before we get into questions, I always like to give this disclaimer, you know, the information that I share on these live streams or in any of my videos, it's just for general information purposes. It's not meant as a substitute for, you know, advice or diagnosis or treatment or anything like that from your doctor or your dietitian or other health professionals. Just general information um, for you to take and do what you will. Uh, so, Brown rice versus white rice. 
So the main differences between brown rice and white rice is that brown rice has a little bit more vitamins, like certain B vitamins and things like that, because uh, it's less refined, and it has more fiber. So those are great things. With that said, that doesn't mean that like you should never eat white rice or anything like that. Um, I choose brown rice because it does have those benefits, and to me, it tastes the same. I know some people have like, a strong they can notice a strong difference between brown rice and white rice or whole grain pasta and white pasta to me I mean if I really try I can say oh yeah it's a little bit different but I don't really care um, part of that is just getting your palate used to it so sometimes for people you know I'll say why not try mixing it half and half and see what you think if you aren't used to the flavor because just like any other food it takes practice to learn a flavor and be able to tell if you like it or not and learn to like it and all that kind of stuff um, but the thing to remember with rice is that most of the time you're eating with other foods right so even though the white rice is a little bit lower in B vitamins and fiber if you're having it with like tonight we're having a bunch of vegetables and stuff they're providing a lot of fiber and you're getting B vitamins from other foods that you're eating so I don't think it's the biggest deal brown rice is a little bit better nutritionally speaking but it's also not something to stress about um, if you go to a restaurant and they have white rice no biggie I wouldn't worry about it um, but you know brown rice does have those certain things going for it so and that's the deal with the two of those all right the mushrooms are finally clean so now we can cut up the mushrooms so I'm going to turn the camera facing down to the cutting board so you can see and um, we you can keep asking questions and stuff I saw some other comment oh in the future says I normally like jasmine rice so last time I bought brown jasmine rice to try it yeah that's a great way to do it um, and Nolanzie 14 says hi hello I'm glad you're here um, okay so let's chop up these mushrooms I'm gonna turn the camera down let's see if I can get it kind of centered for y'all um, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut this up now the thing with roasting which is what we're doing is you want to cut everything up to be similar sizes so, so that the, and this is true with almost anything you're cooking you want stuff to be the same size so that it cooks at the same right rate if you have little pieces and big pieces the big pieces are never going to cook the little pieces are going to burn and it's just annoying so with these mushrooms these are on the medium to small size so we're going to quarter these i'm just going to cut like that and cut like that and now we have these nice chunks and we're just going to work through all of our mushrooms and do it that way now if you're curious about knives because i know some of you are this is a knife that I really like. It's my chef's knife. Um, and it's really important to have a good knife, a knife that is appropriate for the job. So you don't wanna be using a paring knife to chop your vegetables for dinner, for example, because it's just not big enough and it makes things a lot harder. And when you use the knife that's not the right knife, it can mean that you're more at risk for injury. You also want a sharp knife because a sharp knife is safer. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but when you have a sharp knife, it just easily slices through the things that you're cutting. If you have a dull knife, you're gonna have to struggle with it. That means you're more likely to slip and then you could accidentally cut yourself and that's not good. So as far as knives, this is the one that I like. It's by the brand Global. I have it linked in my store. Um, so if you want to check it out and see what it is and perhaps get one for yourself if you're in the market for a new knife Then that is linked below the video. Oh ovens preheated um, That's linked below the video so you can go do that and that's my Amazon store So I do get a small commission when you make purchases through that which is nice because you pay the exact same price But I get a small percentage of that for sending you over to the item so um, if you want if you find value from my videos and the channel and you want to support the channel that's a way you can do that so chopping mushrooms super exciting we're quartering them and like I said these are all about the same size so I'm cutting them the same way some of you know if you've watched other live streams um, if we had a really big mushroom we'd probably cut it into six pieces uh, just again to keep everything around the same size and the stems are fine. Sometimes people ask about that. Like, can you eat the stems? Yes. Um, you can trim the stems if there's like a end that looks kind of weird or whatever. I normally don't bother with that because I think it's just fine. But, you know, you can do whatever you want. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on mushrooms, too, in the comments. Like, are y'all mushroom fans? Um, do you like certain types? Like, maybe these kind of, like, 
baby bella mushrooms are fine but maybe you don't like other types i'd be interested to hear that because i feel like mushrooms is one of those food that a lot of people aren't big fans of and i know as a kid i was and i thought the texture was kind of weird um but you know with lots of practice now as an adult again they're not my favorite food but i can certainly have them in a dish in any recipe and enjoy them and it's not a big deal which i think is one of the the big things with food is you know you want to like as much food as possible because it makes your life a lot easier when you go to a restaurant or go to someone's house uh, to eat or whatever okay so here's this last one is a really big mushroom so this is a good example we're going to cut this one into six pieces just to try to make it as similar as possible to the other ones so mushrooms done um let's see oh nita says brown jasmine rice is yummy in the future says my Father used to hunt for mushrooms, morel mushrooms. They're delicious. Um, I like mushrooms, but my kids aren't big fans. I'm gonna turn you guys to face me for a second. So you're not just looking at my hand. Yeah, wild mushrooms are a really like big thing that a lot of people are into. Now, of course, when you're looking for wild mushrooms, you gotta be careful that you're getting ones that are okay to eat and not ones that are gonna make you sick or possibly kill you because you don't want that to happen. But if you know what you're doing, um, you know, any type of foraging I think is awesome because it's basically free food and it's really cool. We have a, a lot of wild berries that grow in our area and some around our house, which is really nice because we get to pick those every summer. Um, Nita says, I like all different mushrooms. I think having different kinds makes it more visually appealing. Great point. So when you're thinking about your meals, it's not just the flavors, but also the appearance. So having different types of uh, different types of vegetables or maybe variations within one vegetable, different colors, all that kind of stuff can make your meals more interesting and more enjoyable. Okay, so we are going to, I'll turn you a little this way so you can see. We're gonna get these mushrooms on a baking sheet. I've got two baking sheets here full of, or they're about to be full of vegetables. So we're gonna start off with our mushrooms. And um, you know, this is a great thing about roasting is because you can cook so many different vegetables all at once. And it's not super labor intensive. You have to cut everything up, but then once you do that, things just cook and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to babysit it like if you were cooking on the stove top or something like that. Okay, so let's turn back this way and we're going to do some more chopping. And actually, Jason just came in over there. I don't know if he has a desire to be on camera right now, but would you want to wash some vegetables for me in the background? <laughs> oh, that would be really out. nice. Um, what do I have here? I have a couple peppers if you want to rinse these for me. Thanks. Um, Nita says, my mother used to say, we eat with our eyes first. As a kid, I didn't understand it, but now I do. <laughs> and Nita says, hi, Jason. Hi, Nita. Okay, so I'll, I'll use this towel yeah. if you just pass One me the wet ones. Yeah. So next thing we're going to chop up, bell peppers. Right now we have green bell peppers because it's early in the season, so we're not getting a ton of different colors. Um, these are from the farmer's market. And peppers, just like pretty much every other vegetable, are delicious roasted. So I'm really excited for these that we're starting to get some peppers in season here in Virginia. Thank you, my dear. And um, there's also some zucchini there if you want to wash those for me. Oh, okay. Thanks. Anything else? <laughs> hair? No, my hair is well, second day hair, I think. Did you show me this? Yeah, we talked about that. Because uh, <laughs> you can't this? miss it, so. Oh, uh, that needs to be washed too, but that's not the priority if you want to wash. That's a huge. <laughs> What's zucchini? It's in that plastic bag. Oh, I see. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so next thing we're gonna cut up is a pepper, and I think this is a really great one to talk about because a lot of people maybe don't know how to cut up a pepper, and once you learn how to do it, it makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna turn y'all down to face the cutting board again, and we're gonna talk about cutting bell peppers. What do you want? Uh, what do you want these? Um, I'll just put this towel out. Put a pepper there for y'all to look at, and if you just want to lay them on the towel, Jason, then I can dry them. Okay, peppers. So let me get in the frame. Uh, let's do this bell pepper. So bell peppers are kind of weird because you know they're kind of this lumpy shape, and then you've got the seeds in there you have to deal with. It can be kind of annoying, but once you know how to cut a pepper, it's so much easier. So you can start um, either way. I usually do it top side down. Basically, you want to use one of the flat sides, just like anything else. We want to try to create a flat surface if we can because that's going to make it more stable as opposed to something that's going to roll around. Again, increases the risk that we might cut ourselves. So what you do is hold it like this and then you cut down the sides and you cut off chunks like this. So you're cutting around 
the ribs of the pepper, you're cutting around that seed bunch in the middle. And you cut off the end there. And look, so now you've got all of your seeds and everything all together. You don't have seeds all over the place. Um, you can just throw that right in your compost and you have these nice pieces of pepper here. So I'll show you that again so you can see it one more time. So you're gonna put flat side down and then you cut off the sides, just like this. And so you're cutting kind of with the curved shape. Some people also like to, once they cut off a piece, then turn it on its side and go this way and cut that way. You could do that too. I just normally do it this way. But this gives you that nice, easy slice. You're not having to deal with seeds everywhere. And then you just take this whole thing and put it in your compost, okay? And we've got one more pepper to chop, so we will do it one more time. Okay, so cutting down the sides. This is also a way to do it, um, you know, with other types of peppers too, but with a bell pepper, this works especially well because you have that nice flat top or bottom, and then you can just use that to stabilize. So now we have these chunks. Now, I always like to give you guys tips for home. You know that, so if you do have kids, this is a great size to give them something like this. Um, there are these really nice knives. I wonder if they're in my store. I think they probably are. If not, I need to add them. They're kid safe knives. We use them a lot at the nonprofit that I work with, the Dr. Yum Project, in our classes. But you know, you could give a kid a piece like this and they can use a knife that's appropriate for them to cut it into chunks or slices or whatever. And again, just important to get the kids in the kitchen. So for this, we kind of want chunks, I guess is the best way to describe it. So I'm just gonna cut these in half. But Sarah, what is your store? It's linked in the description of the video. But do you know what it is? Because I'm actually trying to type it in. Oh, um, I think it's Amazon.com slash shop slash Sarah Moran Nutrition. Moment of truth. Should get you there. Oh, yeah. So, Jason can tell us if the, the knife, if you're watching on the replay, they'll definitely be there. Because if they're not there now, I'm going to have you're currently using Right, there. we talked about that. Happy out the heater. I do not see it. Okay, I'll have to add it for y'all then, but they're really nice um, knives. So again, as you can see, we're cutting these into similar size pieces as the mushrooms, because again, we want stuff to cook at the same rate. So just kind of working our way through this. We have our straws in there, they're awesome. Yeah, our um, stainless steel straws. If you guys have not gotten into the stainless steel straws, highly recommend. The ones that we use are linked to my store. Um, we love them. I really like them because they make cold beverages extra refreshing because the metal of the straw gets cold. Okay, let me turn you guys. You just throw in the splash bar thing. That thing's a lifesaver. Oh, you like that you think that should be on the... Yeah, so I mean, it makes the, <laughs> the oven cleaning process a million times faster. Okay, see, Jason's got ideas. I should ask him about this stuff. Okay. So we got the mushrooms on the pan. Now we're going to put some peppers on the pan. Let me turn you guys again this way. You guys can kind of see what's happening with the pants. So we got mushrooms over there. I'm gonna put the peppers back on this one. We might have a little too much veg today, but that's okay. We'll squeeze them into the pan and try to make it work. Okay, peppers are done. Next thing we're gonna do is squash, okay? So I'll turn you back this way. So we are going to be, um, Roasting, sorry, I'm really close. <laughs> We're gonna be roasting some zucchini. I'm trying to get the zucchini that are over here. Okay, so zucchini, yellow squash, any kind of summer squash, also delicious roasted. So I will turn you facing the cutting board again. And uh, let me see if I've missed any comments. Oh, Nita asks about cutting boards. Okay, so I'll turn you guys downwards and we'll talk about cutting boards. Nita says, what's the best type of cutting board to use? Now, um, it really depends on what you're looking for. Side note on the zucchini, I'm just cutting off the ends and I'm going to cut chunks and I'm going to quarter each of these. Again, we're trying to get those similar sized pieces. Um, so cutting boards, you want a cutting board that's the right size first off. So we have different sizes. I have some small ones in the kitchen that we use when we're just cutting up a peach or something, um, or cutting up some sort of vegetable to throw in Jason's lunch for hummus or whatever. 
So small cutting boards are important. This is a really giant cutting board, as you guys can see. This is great for when I'm chopping up a lot of vegetables. Um, also, if I'm doing some sort of like bread or baked good, like say I'm making pizza dough um, or something and I need that space to knead or roll the dough out, or if I'm making biscuits, something like that, this is good for that too. Part of it's your preference as far as plastic and wood. Um, I have mostly wooden cut cutting boards, that's just what I like. They have their pros and cons. Um, wooden cutting boards can absorb things like odors, which isn't great, or, you know, bacteria and things. So that's something to be aware of. But, you know, maybe you like the look of wood cutting boards better. I personally do. Um, the other thing with cutting boards is you want to have a separate cutting board for raw meat. If you are cooking with raw meat at home, it's very important to have a separate cutting board that is only used for raw meat. And the reason for that is because of cross-contamination. We don't want some sort of bacteria in our raw meat. You know, the, the raw meat's going to get cooked, right? And then it's going to be fine. But the cutting board is not going to get cooked. So even with washing, you know, there could still be some bacteria hanging behind. And then, say you cut up raw chicken, and then you cut up a vegetable on there. Some cucumbers for your kid's lunch or something. That could be a source of cross-contamination. You could get sick not something we want to happen so having a separate cutting board that's only reserved for raw meats is important and then you know when the meat is cooked you put it on your cooked meat cutting board slash raw vegetable cutting board so we have a cutting board that's just for raw meats that's all that goes on there um and i think it's something a lot of people don't know is important but it really really is something to remember when you're stocking your kitchen do you want these for your lunch uh, can you roast up a jalapeno i think it's going to make a like hot pepper gas in here oh uh, but i mean you can one? sorry we can roast jalapenos yes for sure i've done it before Either but they probably need to come out sooner maybe than everything else so don't do it now i wouldn't i would prefer oh. not to experiment right now like i roast them well i broil them whenever i make like the tomatilla salsa i put them under the broiler i don't know plus we're gonna put sriracha on our final bowl so. But, all right. this chair here. Oh, she very well may. <laughs> we have kitties under my feet at all times. Okay, y'all. This is a lot of squash. Summer squash is one of my favorite foods. You're making squash bowls? Apparently. With squash rice? But I have a lot of squash in the fridge. That doesn't mean we have to eat it all. Jason is not a fan <laughs> of summer squash. If you guys couldn't tell, summer squash is not his favorite thing. But that's okay. So that's another important thing about this meal, right? We have lots of different things for different people. Um, I'll eat a little bit of the mushrooms. Jason will have a couple pieces of squash. But, you know, on the flip side, I'm going to eat a lot of squash. She's going to eat a lot of the mushrooms because that's what we like. So when we have these different things, it allows different people in the family to not be excluded from the meal. Um, and... It's also nice because if you have a crowd of people, like I said before, maybe you don't know what they like or whatever, if you throw in a few different things, it gives people some options. And we have a lot of squash in the fridge, so I'm just like, whatever. If I don't eat it as this, I'll just eat it straight up as a snack because I love, love roasted summer squash. Okay, squash is cut up. Let's go back. I wonder. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about you. How can you not like summer squash? Like, it's so wild to me because i think it's one of the most like it's been one of my favorites ever since i was a kid not to yuck your yum or anything as they say but yeah it's just kind of squishy and kind of gross tasting the texture is a big thing for you yeah, well, which is funny because the, the texture is a big problem for a lot of people with mushrooms and you love mushrooms yeah, luna don't don't get on the knife okay we've got a kitty here on the side maybe she'll agree to be in the frame but can i pick you up She's like, oh, no, I'm leaving now. Okay. Um, we're going to put the squash on the pan now. And I think I'm going to put it in with the peppers. I think that will work. Let me see what comments I've missed. Oh, in the future said, I would like to see the Kid Safe Knife or maybe a link. Okay, I will definitely add that to I'll my store. I'll link that. What are they called? You could go awesome. on my computer right now yeah, and add it if you want. Okay, add the chat. I'm going to do it. I have the well, store I'll open. Have the store yeah, yeah, just add it to the store. Jason's going to go add it to the store right now. So once that, once he's done that, I'll let you know. And if you're watching live, you can click over, and if, it'll be there. And if you're watching on the replay, then it's been there long before you got here. So, All right, squash going on the pan. Well, this is a lot of squash. We're going to 
the rule with roasting is to not overcrowd the overcrowd the pan because you don't want stuff to steam you want it to roast but we might have to push the boundaries on that a little bit today because I cut up a lot of vegetables. All right, the, the squash just keep coming. Um, there's a, what? Um, just search puppy knife. The the brand is like it starts with a K. It's I don't know Swedish or something. It's like Krone or Krone or something like that. If you go in my um, purchase items too, like on my account, because I have purchased them personally before, so that might. What? Your account or my account? My account. You can also try searching dog knives. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to grab a couple onions and we're going to cut up onions. And I see that Nita has a comment. We use a compost bucket in our kitchen to collect all our veggie scraps. This is also linked in the store. <laughs> I tried to link in there the stuff I use all the time because it's my favorite stuff. Um, the stuff that I really think is great and, you know, is good for other people to have. But also, I know you guys are going to be seeing a lot in these types of videos. So I want you to be able to find the stuff that I like if you're interested. Okay, so onions. I have a couple red onions here. I put these in the freezer just to help with the tear factor. If you put them in the freezer a little bit before you cut them, it makes it so they don't make you cry as much. Another trick you can use is pouring some vinegar on your cutting board. And then when you cut your onion, you put the cut side in the vinegar and it helps neutralize the chemicals in there that react with your eye that make you cry. So those are a couple tricks. Or you can get onion goggles, which look really cute. Um, or you could just wear like swimming goggles or something that just kind of sucks into your eye. So, you know, those chemicals aren't getting in there. Okay, let's turn this around. Um, okay, Nita says, how do you guys handle meals made by one person that the other person may not like the taste after the meal is already made? Um, that isn't really a problem that we have. I wouldn't, because... Well, some stuff I don't like, though. Well, before we get into the specifics, I will say Jason and I like pretty much everything. While we do have our different preferences, we are willing to eat basically any food. Um, so... It's not like a big thing we have to deal with. Also, we know very well what the other one prefers and does not prefer. So, eggplant dishes. Right. So, I'm able to keep that in mind when I'm preparing meals because I know if I had a meal where the only vegetable was squash, Jason would not be very happy. So, Divorce. now, and that does not mean that we never <laughs> have squash because I like it and Jason still eats a little bit of it just to keep like practicing and trying it, even though he knows it's not his favorite thing because it's good to keep trying stuff. Um, Wait. same with the mushrooms, I probably would not make a pan of roasted mushrooms if I was just cooking for myself, to be honest. But you would never make a squash based dish, though. right? Right, I would Unless not, or I would else. have other components, and that's the thing about meal planning is you want to have different components to your meal. So whether you're cooking for adults or if you have kids, you want to have things, you know, keep everyone's preferences in mind, but that also does not mean that someone get one person gets to dictate what's served, or we never have a food that one member of the family does not like. It's also um, about not not being hurtful or having hurt feelings. Like if I tell Sarah, like. I don't like this. I'm not like, oh, this is disgusting. It's like, this really isn't my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Try to be nice about it or whatever, and she's okay if, like, I go and eat a peanut butter banana instead or something. Yeah, but that's not something you ever do. But if it did yeah. happen, if there was something that you were like, I don't know. I also, this is not to brag, but I feel like I'm a pretty good cook. Oh, wow. So maybe Thank that you know, helps. Her <laughs> um, knives are added on there. Oh. It's the ones we bought before, right? For Hazelwood? Um, yeah, uh, well, that's a set that has the scissors. That's the one that I wanted to before? Yeah. You're looking for just the knives. Just the knives. All right, I'll go back. Just add them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jay, so one of them's on there now if you want to go look. You can, whatever. Um, <laughs> Nita says, you go, girl. Yeah, so I think that's a factor, too. But part of it's knowing preferences. Um, and just, yeah, not being a jerk. Also, like if Jason made something and it wasn't great or was my favorite, again, I wouldn't be like, oh, this is gross, bleh, you know, because that's rude. I would, you know, just kind of suck it up. And hopefully it's not disgusting. And if it is like repulsive and no one can eat it, then I think everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, this just doesn't taste, it's like inedible. Um, 
but those are some things you want to have different components of each meal um, and just keep other people in mind but again one person doesn't dictate what everyone else is eating and it's not like if one person doesn't like something then it never comes in the house um, and that's especially important with kids because for kids they're still learning about food and it takes time for them to develop their preferences um, and to practice foods and try them all kinds of different ways and all that kind of stuff so you know you just got to keep having the different foods around and everyone just kind of deals with it um, Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera down. Oh, in the future said there's always the compost bin. Haha. <laughs> yeah, and if we have leftovers, sometimes there's something that Jason will eat a lot more of the leftovers of or I'll eat a lot more of. Sometimes if it's something that one of us really likes and the other one isn't that into. Okay, onions. So I'm going to turn the camera down again to the cutting board. Okay, so we're going to cut these onions into wedges tonight. So this is kind of the brace the basics of breaking down an onion. So you cut off the top, cut it in half, then we're gonna peel off this outer layer of papery stuff. There we go. And if we were going to, you know, dice this, then we would go about it a little bit different from this point forward, but we are not dicing today. We are doing wedges, so I'm gonna show you how we do that if I can get the last little bits of onion skin off. There we go. Okay, so since we want wedges, because again, we want our pieces in similar shapes and sizes, I'm cutting off the ends like that, and then I'm just gonna go around and cut us some nice onion chunks, okay? Did you add them? Yeah, that is a net that I give up. Okay, all the knives should be on there now. So if you want to well, see the kids' knives. There's one puppy, like, serrated knife, and one puppy, like, normal knife. Yeah. That's what you're talking about? You put, yeah. it's a set of two? No, I couldn't find the set of two. You just put one of each? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's The fine. set of two didn't exist. Okay, yeah. Unless maybe it was there, I can find it. That's like, fine. You guys know like, how to use Amazon, too. Once you get in there. Well, yeah. Maybe you can find the still up from there. But I was trying to have been like, coon puppy knives. It's like, did you want this really sharp knife? I'm like, no, that's not what I want. I <laughs> want some puppy knives. Okay, so the puppy knives are there now. Yeah. They're great for kids. Um, we start using them in the Dr. Young Project kitchen at age three for kids to use. They're nice because they'll cut food, but they won't cut a child's hand. And they are the right size for kids' hands. And it helps them to, it gives them some cues, like the puppy has a little tail and you want the tail end pointing up in the air. Um, the puppy has a, a little ear and that's where you put your finger. So it's a really nice tool for kids. And the thing with the puppy knife is yes, they can't cut kids, but that doesn't mean we tell kids it doesn't matter how you use it. Like you still want it. it's a tool to help them learn proper knife skills and techniques to be safe in an environment where they can't get hurt. So when they start using real knives, they already know how to do everything. Um, so you want to treat it like it's a sharp knife so they're learning the skills. Um, and now, as you can see, I'm crying because of onions. <laughs> I think I left them sitting out on the cutting board too long while I was running my mouth so they're not quite as frozen. Jason, because <laughs> you're being my assistant, will you get me a tissue? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Woo! Okay, the rice is done. The tissue would be great, but... Uh... Woo! All right. So, oh, no, we're out. yeah, I think there's some in the other room. No, it's fine. I'll use this dish oh, towel. I got it, I got it, okay, I got it. thank you. All right, so while he's doing that and I'm crying, <laughs> let's put these onions on the, on the pan and get these going. So onions are going on the pan with the mushrooms. Like so. And I'm going to rinse the onion off my hands real quick before I wipe my eyes because we don't want to make this situation worse than it already is. Okay. Um, in the future says those knives sound great. My kids love puppies. Yeah, they're super cute. Yeah. And um, well, we always tell kids, let me get the tears off my face. We always tell kids is you want to, you know, hold, you've got your puppy knife and you want to hold your hand like a kitty claw. So you want to tuck your fingers in. You don't want your fingers hanging out because that's how you cut off the finger. Um, so you make a kitty claw and you have your puppy knife uh, and they can learn how to chop. And they're really cool and really fun and I think they are just the cutest, the cutest thing ever. Okay, stuff's in the pan. Now we need to season all of this up. So let me get the stuff for that. All right, so we've got some seasonings and now I need some oil. 
Boom. Okay, so we're gonna put all this stuff on the pan. And the rice is fine, it's just sitting here, you know, and it will stay warm while the veggies cook. So, we are going to take this salt and I'm gonna sprinkle it on everything. So with roasted veggies, there's kind of a basic recipe, but again, you can then make any modifications you want. So salt always goes on there because salt makes everything taste better. It enhances flavors and is important in cooking to make your food taste good. So we're gonna sprinkle some salt on there. Now you can just use salt as your only seasoning. That's perfectly fine. I like to always add garlic powder to my roasted veggies because garlic powder makes, just like the salt, it makes everything taste better. So, it's a little turn. Yeah, we're gonna pour in some garlic powder. And you can also use other spices or herbs that you like. So if you wanted to put on, I don't know, like paprika, that would work. Or you could add in a little cayenne. Or you could put on like some dried rosemary or dried thyme or oregano or basil. Any of these things or any combination that you like will work. Um, and it's just how complicated you want to make it, how many different flavors you want, if you want more simple. Also, the flavors of that meal and what you think will go well with whatever else you're cooking. And I did see another comment come through with a question. So I'm not ignoring you, but I'm gonna get these in the oven and then we'll talk about it. Should I find this? Uh, you can. Well, it's gonna go It's a little soon. bit of stir fry, yeah. I figured I'm gonna eat it, right? It's not, I don't know if it's enough for you to have a full meal out of it though. It doesn't melt on top Okay. Um, all right, so now we're gonna put on our oil. You need oil for roasting. So this is some olive oil. This olive oil is also linked to my store. We've got all the things in the store today. So if you want the specific brand that I'm using, then it's here This for you. oven is linked in my <laughs> store. This oven is linked is in my store. I feel like I'm like on QVC <laughs> or something. Like, and you too can have this olive oil. Now I just know that people want to know what I'm using. So. A husband watching vegetables also in the store. <laughs> you too can have a husband <laughs> wash your vegetables. Okay, we got the oil on all the veggies. Now we're just gonna toss everything up just to get the onion, the onion, the oil and the garlic and the salt all kind of coating everything. Let's do a quick toss here. And just to get stuff spread out on the pan. Because again, we want to try to make everything in an even layer. We don't want stuff like really piled up because we want it to roast, um, which means that it's going to get nice and caramelized and those flavors are going to get concentrated as opposed to steaming um, which doesn't give you the same result. That's fine, but it's not what we're going for today. So we're gonna toss up these peppers and toss the squash all up and spread it all out. And then these can go in the oven, but I gotta wash the oil off my hands real quick. That's done. Okay, so veggies are going in the oven. temperature I have you can you can do it between 400 and 425 Fahrenheit I normally go for 425 um, 400 Fahrenheit I'm pretty sure is about 200 Celsius so if you're using Celsius that kind of gives you a ballpark um, and then we're gonna roast these for about 30 minutes most veggies 30 minutes is about right some things like potatoes I tend to leave them a little bit longer if you're doing something really delicate like I don't know, even like the peppers they could if I just had a pan of peppers I might do it for like 20 or 25 minutes um but 30 minutes is a general rule so I was gonna like ask you what it was in Celsius as a joke <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no oh, I wow. got it down because <sighs> I talk one because I talk about roasting all the time, so I try to remember it because I know a lot of you use Celsius. But also because there's a recipe that I had to use that was in Celsius, and I kept converting it over and over, like, oh wait, what's that in Fahrenheit? And it was always like around 400. Centigrade? So that helped me learn it. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know why you say Celsius versus centigrade. Is that a real like? I don't one know. Description I was... versus one that's actually better. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. We're over it? here with you know. Fahrenheit. Oh. <laughs> there's a standard system. There's 12 inches in a foot and 5 million in a hectare acre and whatever. Eight ounces in a cup. Yeah. Two cups in a pint. Two pints in a quart or four cups in a quart. Four quarts in a gallon. <laughs> it makes sense. Not really, but it does make sense to me because I grew up with it. Um, okay, so we've got that in the oven. 
the rice is done. So this is a time where we can one do questions, but also talk about some of the benefits of this type of meal. So yes, there was a lot of chopping, right? But now everything's in the oven. Really, there isn't much else to do as far as active cooking. The veggies are just cooking. You don't have to be sitting here at the pan, tossing them and turning them, stirring, whatever. They just do their thing and you can just, you know, don't leave your house with the oven on, but you can go do something else and you don't have to babysit it. Um, so that's nice. Now, this is also a time where you can prep other things for the meal. So maybe you want to cook up some ground beef to put in your um, rice bowl. Maybe you are cooking some beans. Um, they could be going right now in the background. Maybe you are, I don't know, what else? You want to do some shrimp or some fish or pork or whatever. This is a time where you would cook that. But we don't have to cook anything like that because we have leftovers from yesterday. So. As I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, yesterday was the 4th of July here in the U.S. And my family did like a big spread, lots of food, and there's a lot of leftovers that we brought home. And one of the things in there was some sausages that my parents had grilled. So we're going to be using that in our rice bowls as our protein. Um, and that means that I don't have to cook them, we just got to heat them up in the microwave when the time comes. So that's really nice. It makes this meal a little less active than it normally is. I'll say it's the 4th of July everywhere, really. <laughs> well, it was the 4th of July everywhere, but I know not everyone was cooking out and eating food and had the day off from work and everything like that. Okay, so I saw a question come in from Jordan Parker. Um, okay, I have a question. What? Sorry, I'm looking at the iPad in case you get, just to remind you, I'm not looking at the floor. <laughs> I have a question. What do you do when your toddler refuses to eat anything but bread and sweets? Is it bad to try to make them eat other food? Great question. Okay, so this question has a few different levels to it. I'll try to cover them all, but I will also refer you to some resources that can help you um, as well if you want to, you know, dig into what? Including three books in your Amazon. <laughs> they are. They are. Okay, we're getting there. Yeah, they're, no, I just saw. They're it. in the Amazon saw, store, yeah, guys. This is. <laughs> this is not a scheme. I promise. Um, okay. So toddler who refuses a lot of foods. Now there's a there's a spectrum with this as far as kids and how picky or not picky they are. Now as far as using the word picky eater, I'll use that with you guys because it's kind of the word that people use and we know what we're talking about. But the first thing is you never want to use that word with a kid or like label a child as the picky one because that can kind of become an identity that they start to take on to themselves. And it comes becomes a self-fulfilling thing where you say, well, you're picky, you won't like that. Well, you know, Johnny, he's really picky, so he's probably not gonna, and then the kid thinks, oh, I'm picky, I don't need a lot of foods and it kind of becomes a part of their identity and it just makes, the issue worse. So that's one thing to know. Um, second thing to know is that toddlers naturally are going to be more selective than an adult or even a, a very young child who's first learning about food. So kids have to learn food just like they have to learn how to ride their bike or learn their ABCs or how to read or how to do math or how to do potty training or whatever. It's a skill they have to learn. They have to learn how to eat. They have to learn that food is different from other things and that we eat food and they have to learn the different flavors and the different textures and all of this kind of stuff. So it's important to remember that kids, all this stuff is new to them and they're just learning and figuring it out. And so if you can think about the first time that you ate a food that you never had before, maybe as an adult, it's not a common experience for a lot of us, but especially if you've had something from a different culture's cuisine or something that wasn't familiar to you, you probably didn't think it was like your most favorite number one food the first time you had it. You were probably a little cautious because you didn't know what it was going to taste like. Um, you weren't sure what you thought about it. It might be very different from anything you've had before. So keep that in mind with kids, that this is all new to them. They're learning it and, you know, they're going to have, you know, just some reservations maybe or be a little uncertain because it's all new to them. Um, the other thing to know is that with toddlers specifically, even compared to children that are younger, they naturally kind of have the stage where they might be a little more selective with their eating. And that happens for a couple reasons. Or they might not eat as much. So when you have a new eater, you know, when that kid is first starting to get introduced to solid foods, they don't have a lot else to do okay because <laughs> they're not as mobile they don't have as many interests or whatever um it's just a fun experience and they're growing super fast so they need a lot of food compared to their body size because 
they're growing really fast. And so then it's a natural thing that happens as kids' growth starts to slow down, as they get a little bit older, they're not as interested in food. They also are more mobile. They have other interests, other things they want to do. And parents can kind of freak out and be like, oh, my kid, what are they doing? They're not eating like they used to. Um, and it can be really scary. So if you know that that's a normal part of their development, they're not growing as fast. And they have other interests and things that they have going on, then that can help you understand what's happening a little bit too. Um, also, kids usually have a little bit more sensitivity to bitter flavors and that's just a safety thing that our bodies do because bitter can indicate that something is poisonous um so a lot of times children are more sensitive to those flavors and it's just like a natural thing to keep them safe so also knowing that their preferences and tastes are going to change over time and communicating that to them that like you know if you don't like something the first time you try it totally fine but making sure that they know that it's important to practice food we all need to practice different foods preparing it a different way, you might like it better than another way. Um, also, over time, your preferences might just change. So, teaching them about that as well. Now, if your kid is only eating a few things, it's hard to know because I don't know your specific situation, and that would be something that we have to work on more on one, one on one, which is an option if you want to do that. But, um, the a few things that can help is one the division of responsibility so this is an idea to describe um, what the parents role is and what the child's role is and these change a little bit from like when you have a baby who basically they're in charge of it all like they say when we're going to eat what we're going to eat you know where it's going to happen whatever they're just kind of feed on demand you know and all the way up through when you're getting like a, a kid who's 18 and maybe has a car and is driving and maybe they're doing some of the food preparation or the meal planning or the cooking, you know, they're gonna have a little bit more. The rules evolve over time. But generally speaking, the parent's job is to decide what we're eating, when we're eating, and where we're eating. The kid gets to decide if they eat and how much they eat. So, parent, your job is the meal plan, what we're eating. Tonight for dinner, we're having rice bowls with roasted squash, mushrooms, peppers, onions, and all the other stuff, you know, that we're about to do here, okay? Um, when? 6 p.m. Where? At the dinner table in our home. That's your job. So then once you get that food on the table, everyone's there, your job's done. Then the kids get to decide what they would like to eat from what has been offered to them for that meal. So they, they aren't going in the cabinet and picking out other stuff or making you cook something else. They get to decide if and how much they eat. So am I gonna eat any of this stuff? And how much of it am I gonna eat? And once you divide those two roles, it takes a lot of the stress out of meal times because you're not trying to micromanage everything that's going on. They feel comfortable and relaxed. We wanna make meals a pleasant experience. We want food to be a pleasant experience. Um, and there's a lot more details we can go in with this stuff. If your child is very selective, the big thing is keep exposing them to food. Have them involved in the chopping and the cooking, okay? If they are hands-on, that's great. Even just touching stuff, smelling it. If you have a garden, growing it, picking it, helping you at the grocery store to pick things out, getting them involved with food wherever you can, and just keep offering the different things. So when you have a meal, have a mixture of things that they tend to enjoy, maybe some new foods, maybe some foods they don't like as much. Talk to them how about how it's important to practice and all of that. Um, and, you know, just... It's about the consistency and the constant exposure. And they don't get a second meal. If they don't wanna have what's here, too bad. We're not, you know, mom or dad or whoever in the family is not making another meal for you. You just eat from what's offered. Now again, obviously, I'm not gonna give Jason a plate of roasted squash and be like, this is dinner. And you don't wanna do that with your kid either. You wanna have a few different options, like I just mentioned. Um, but, also them knowing that like you know table manners and like you don't get a second meal because if you're just making extra stuff for them then they're never gonna feel like they want to try stuff also hunger is important kids don't need constant snacking they need regular meal and snack times breakfast snack lunch snack dinner opportunities to eat they may eat or not eat um but you know they you don't want to be filling your kids up with stuff all the time throughout the day. And then they get to dinner, they're not hungry. Of course they're not going to eat because they're not hungry for it. Um, so those are a few things. Now, resources. First, if you want one-on-one -on -one help, I'm available. You can work with me. I do take one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, and this is something that we can work on together. So if that's something you're interested in, 
my emails in the description of the video shoot me an email and we can chat further and get that figured out um, for you as far as books and resources on my Amazon store uh, there are a lot of books there that are really great um, raising happy healthy eater is a great one um, the what is it called child of mine by Ellen Zatter that talks about the division of responsibility also just the Ellen Zatter Institute website is great has more information on the division of responsibility um, for really little kids fearless feeding that's a good one if your kid would probably fit in that age group for that one too um, there's another one called Adventures in Veggie Land, that's a new book by Melanie Potok, who's a speech language pathologist. She's also co-author of Raising a Happy Healthy Eater, along with Dr. Namali Fernando, who um, runs the Dr. Young Project that I work with. But um, Adventures in Veggie Land is great for exposing kids to food. There's all kinds of different activities that you can do with food just to get kids involved, uh, but then also recipes to use those foods. So again, trying to take those steps of maybe getting them involved with touching the food and becoming a little more familiar with it if your child's a little more cautious. And yeah, if you need one-on-one -on -one help, definitely that's something that can be a great option too. Um, working with someone like me, a dietitian, to help with, with it. Sometimes kids need extra help like at home with the actual process of eating, so a speech language pathologist can help with that. But there's lots of resources out there. So I hope all of that was helpful for you and gave you some ideas um, and then some other things you can do to go forward. And for those of you who have no interest in that question, that was a really long answer, but I hope that you found it helpful in some regard. Did you mention Raising a Happy Healthy Eater? Yeah, Raising a Happy Healthy Eater, Fearless Feeding. You also have one called Born to Eat. Oh, Born to Eat, that's a good one. I think that might veer a little bit more on introducing foods. Yeah, the Adventures of in Veggie Land, you said, uh -huh. and Child of Mine, you said. Yeah. And then a bunch of intuitive eating, that's not related to that. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of the adult version, I guess. So yeah, if you go on the store, there's all kinds of books. Okay, so we've got the veggies roasting. Let me see. Um... Oh, a little bit more on that. Is it bad to tr make them try other foods? So that kind of goes back to the division of responsibility. You never want to be force feeding your kid, but you want to expose them to different things. So having different things at the meal that they're not a big fan of is totally fine. And then they get to decide if they want to eat it, how much they want to eat it. If it becomes this high pressure environment of like, you need to have two bites of this and two bites of that and whatever. One, it can mess up a child's and their attunement to their hunger and fullness cues because as adults, we're not a good job, really, of judging how much food anyone else needs because everyone's different, but also, a especially with a kid, because their needs are so different from ours, depending on if they're going through a growth spurt or not, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it can mess with that. Also, that kind of high-pressure environment can create a few different reactions. If you have a child who is very much like a rule follower or just wants to be a people pleaser, they'll just go along with it and do what you say. And that might feel good as a parent. Like, look, they're eating the stuff. But again, maybe they're eating when they're not hungry. Um, or maybe they're like choking down this thing that they really hate. And now they're, they're never going to like that food because they just have this negative experience of like, this tastes gross, but I just have to eat it. And again, with kids, we want them to get the nutrients they need now. But it's also about when they're 30 what are they going to meal plan for themselves when they go to the grocery store are they going to buy that food or are they like nope that food i had to eat it when i was a kid it was the worst thing ever and i never want to have it again now that i'm an adult um if you have a kid who is maybe a little more like rebellious then they might take the approach of like you want me to eat that thing well guess what i'm never eating it and meal time becomes this like fighting battle thing so depending on your child's personality the results they're, the way they behave might be a little different, but the result is the same as that they're not getting introduced to the foods and or they are, but they're not enjoying it. And, you know, it's, it's kind of not the point, right? Um, so I hope that was helpful for you. Okay. Rice has been done. The veggies are cooking. We're going to prep a couple more things for our rice bowls now, and I'm going to get a drink of water. Do you want to comment on people worrying about protein? Not People, that. It's a whole other thing. I mean, if you guys have more questions about feeding kids, this is really a topic that I work with a lot in my professional work, but I don't talk a lot about it on the channel. And I have mentioned I want to talk about it more because I really think it's important and interesting. So if you guys have other questions, either for the live stream or for video topics, like that, what I just did there, that could definitely be a video top, maybe a couple video topics that's a little more like concise and not me like, you know, just spouting stuff off the top of my head. Um, just and get this video later and just chop off the ends and boom, video done. No, I wouldn't do that. I would. It's like, like, why is she also like, all hot and sweaty? Like, like, why is she in her kitchen? Just like beeping in the background. Why is her husband talking? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, plus no one's gonna find this because it's like, what, an hour into a live stream? Well, the, the ends yeah, off. no, but I'm saying for this video, like, right, right. unless you're here hanging with me, you don't know what's up. Okay, Nita says, maybe prepping foods in different ways. Yeah, that's and that's an important thing to talk about with kids is that the way something is prepared can be very different. So a raw cucumber just by itself is different than dipping that in some sort of hummus or ranch or tzatziki sauce or whatever is different from a pickle is different from maybe a cucumber in some sort of salad with you know fruits or other vegetables or whatever so that's just one vegetable but you can have it so many different ways so many different preparations that change the flavors and the textures and all that kind of stuff so keeping that in mind exposing your child to foods in different preparations and also just teaching them about that like how the way we cook foods can make them taste different um and that can be fun because it gives us variety in our food but also you might prefer something one way compared to another way and you know that's part of them learning about food and also exploring and learning about their own preferences um okay so let's Let's work on some more vegetable chopping, okay? There's more chopping to do. I'm gonna grab a couple bowls because we have a couple things that we're gonna do raw with the with the rice bowls. Well, you need me to put a handkerchief on the Um, I don't think I need your help. Did you wash off that cucumber? I wash off your cucumber? No, yeah, the one. No, here. I did not. Okay, thanks. I just don't need it to know. Does he'll have one in the fridge? Um, I think this one will be. Right. I think we'll use the whole one. Okay, so let me rinse off this. So we've got the roasted veggies. Now we're gonna chop up some raw veggies for our rice bowls. So we've got a cucumber here. And um, we're just gonna do this in a nice dice. And this is another thing about the rice bowls. Again, different. it's nice to have different preparations like we were just talking about for kids, different flavors, different textures. So we're gonna have some veggies that are cooked. They're gonna have a little bit more rich flavor. They've got some seasonings on them. They're gonna be a little bit softer in texture. Then we're also gonna have some raw veggies that are gonna be a little bit cool, a little bit more crisp, and just kinda like that fresh, clean, just their plain flavor standing on their own. So I'm gonna cut up this cucumber and I'm gonna turn the camera facing downwards for you guys. And feel free to ask any other questions as we go. Um, but with this cucumber, we're gonna do a dice, like I said. So, make sure that's kind of in the frame for you guys. Um, and this, again, is something that kids can help with. So, first thing we're gonna do is cut off the ends and get those out of here. Then I'm gonna cut this into, let's do three chunks. And, Let's do, I'll cut them in half. So an older child, you could give them a piece like this and they could cut it. Um, if you had a smaller child, you can pre-cut it. So we're gonna cut these little sticks. And so a small, smaller child with those knives, you could give them like one of these and say, okay, we're gonna cut it into small pieces and they can help you. Um, if you're cutting it yourself as a grown up, we're just gonna pull them all together and run our knife through. We're just doing thin, small cuts because this is something we're just going to put in a bowl and have with a spoon for people to grab. So that's one chunk and then we're just going to go through the rest of this cucumber and do the same thing. Boom, boom, boom. I'm dicing across. And this is actually a perfect example, you know, talking about people's preferences. Cucumbers, I am not a big fan. And I talked about this a little bit in a recent video where I talked about things that my parents did that I think made a big difference in um, helping me to eat a lot of different foods. But, you know, cucumbers are not one of my favorite foods. I did not like them as a kid. I would never choose them. Uh, but I did love pickles. So one thing my mom did was tell me that pickles are made from cucumbers. So that was already kind of learning like, oh, the way you prepare something can make a difference. But also, I had to practice cucumbers a lot. Like, it was a conscious effort. I remember, especially in college, really working on it. Like, cucumbers are on a lot of different things, and they're very common. And you know what's annoying? When you can't eat something that's very common because you're either kind of, like, chewing through it but not enjoying it, or you have to try to find stuff that doesn't have anything or whatever. It's just annoying. So, in college, I was like, I'm going to work on this cucumber thing. So... I would get cucumbers on my sandwiches. I would get cucumbers in my salads. Um, you know, mixing them in with other foods that I liked. It wasn't like I was just munching on raw cucumbers, but working them into other foods. And you know what? 
Cucumbers are not my favorite. I do not want to sit down and eat slice after slice of raw cucumber. But can I enjoy them in a cucumber salad with some fruits or some other vegetables? Absolutely. Can I enjoy them in a meal like this where I'm going to scoop them into this other bowl of all these other flavors that I like? Yes. And I actually really enjoy the flavor that cu raw cucumbers give to a dish like this, even though I'm not a big fan of them on their own. So that's a personal example for me. Okay, I'm going to get these cucumbers into a bowl on the side. And then we're going to move on to our next raw veggie, which is tomato. This is my favorite vegetable, as many of you know. I like to call myself the tomato queen. I, one of my favorite snacks as a kid and now still as an adult is just diced raw tomato with a little salt and pepper. Delicious. Oh, sorry, I keep hitting the camera. My garden has Man, I really keep hitting the camera. Sorry, guys. I hope you're not getting motion sick. Uh, one of my... Oh, in the garden, one of my favorite things to grow is tomatoes, and I have over 50 tomato plants out there. So I love myself a good tomato. We're just going to dice this. Again, similar size to what we have going on with the cucumber. And another thing with these live streams, like I know that at this point we are over an hour, and you might be thinking like, this making dinner thing takes forever. Remember that I'm talking and answering questions and demonstrating and taking breaks to chat with you guys, um, which I love. But if you're like, you know, oh, well, this meal takes a long time to cook. It doesn't really take this long if you're just cooking and listening to a podcast or chatting with your kids or your spouse or whatever um, while you're cooking or listening to some music. Um, it's not going to take this long because... You're not doing all this other stuff that I'm doing right now while also cooking. Okay, so that's one tomato. I'd love to hear, do you guys have any personal examples of maybe foods that you didn't really care for as a kid, but as an adult you grew to appreciate um, or maybe even really love just because of the time factor or because you learned to make it in a different way? I would love to hear that because I think we all have things like that. Um, one for Jason was mashed potatoes. He says that he did not like mashed potatoes at all as a kid, and now that's actually one of his favorite foods. So, and, you know, talking to your kids about that, like your personal examples, I think is great. Or if you still have foods that you yourself are practicing um, as an adult, you know, demonstrating that for your kids, like, this isn't a food I particularly enjoy, but you know what? I'm going to try it. Like, maybe you go to a restaurant that is known for preparing this thing or has it in a recipe. Like, we're going to get it, and I'm going to try it, or we're going to have some at dinner, and I'm going to try some. Um, I, mean, I mean, me and Jason still do that to ourselves. Like I mentioned earlier, mushrooms aren't my favorite, but I'm going to get a few mushrooms when I make my bowl. Squash is not his favorite, but he's going to get a few pieces of squash when he makes his bowl uh, just to have it again and practice it. And also remember that one food is not going to make or break anyone nutritionally. If your kid does not like broccoli, or if you personally do not like broccoli, like, if you never eat a piece of broccoli in your life, you'll be fine. <laughs> it's about the breadth of what you're eating. It's not about one food. No one food has, like, the secret thing that everyone needs or whatever. You can get nutrients from a variety of different foods. Um, but I also think, especially with something that's very common, it's nice if you can at least be able to maybe not love it, but think it's all right because, again, you don't have to worry about going to a restaurant and not knowing if you're going to be able to, if you're going to like anything on the menu or having to pick stuff out um, or going to a friend's house for dinner and then being like, oh, what if they make something I don't like? I don't like a lot of foods. You know, no one wants to be in that situation. Okay, tomatoes are chopped. So we've got that. I'm going to bring you guys back up to my level. There we go. Um, oh, we've got another comment too. Or a couple questions, comments. Oh, Nita says, I hated tomatoes as a kid, but love them now, and I love to try the different kinds. So that's a perfect example. Thanks for sharing that. And Jordan said, I have a hard time with chicken. I can eat it, but it has to be prepared a certain way and with a lot of flavor. So those are some good personal examples from you guys. So, you know, talk to your kids about that stuff and just be honest with them. Um, that we all have different preferences, but we also all, you know, want to try different stuff and try to learn to like different things. 
and that it takes time. It takes, especially for kids, as they're growing and their preferences and their taste buds and stuff are changing and they're learning about new foods and learning about the flavors and the textures. Um, it does take a lot of practice. Okay, so now that we are getting close to these veggies coming out of the oven, let's start talking about how we're gonna pull this meal together. So, a couple more things that you can think about with a meal like this. We've got some cooked veg, we've got some raw veggies, we have our base, I'm doing rice. You could also do like quinoa, something like that if you want to, or you could do pasta if you wanna do like a pasta bowl. Um, then, you wanna have your protein, so beans, tofu, different types of meat or fish or poultry or whatever. We're gonna reheat some sausages tonight. Um, but the other thing is other kind of flavor boosting toppings. So this is gonna be things like fresh herbs, um, things like different sauces and toppers. So maybe like hummus or tzatziki sauce or sriracha or other types of hot sauce that you like. Salsa can be another great flavor booster. Different types of cheeses. So, you know, shredded cheddar cheese or feta or goat cheese or whatever, you know, you like. You can put a few different options out. So those are other things you can add. Really, it's just about having the spread of a bunch of different options. People get to go down and pick what they want and make their own unique combination based on what they like or what they just feel like right then for that meal. And it's also fun because, you know, you can even switch it up from meal to meal as far as the different things you offer, but also the different things you choose to put in your bowl. And even though it's a similar style of meal, it can really range in the flavors depending on what types of things you're preparing, what type of vegetables you have, what type of base you have, whether it's rice or some other starch, um, what types of meats or beans or whatever you're using, different spices, different herbs, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think fresh, if you're wondering about herbs, I think fresh cilantro is great, fresh basil. Jason and I did dill here recently, that was really good. Um, what are some other ones? Fresh parsley, that would be great. Whatever you like, you know, just kind of roll it up. Okay, so my veggies are about to come out. So I am going to get ready and I'm gonna make a bowl for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Let me get all of my stuff. get myself a bowl and I also am going to need a couple spoons so I will turn y'all to face this way a little bit so you see I have the rice there sitting on the pan so I'm gonna take this rice up okay so the rice is all fluffed and I'm gonna get a spoon and start with this as my base another thing you can have with a meal like this is some sort of leafy green so if you have some sort of like arugula or spring mix or if you have like some leftover cooked kale or something from another meal or whatever you can incorporate that and again I'm making everything here fresh but this is a great meal for using leftovers don't forget about that um, if you just have extra veg you need to cook or stuff that's already cooked and you need a meal for it this type of bowl setup is great that might be a little too much rice I always overdo the rice and then I don't have enough room for my veggies so and I've got some rice there in the bottom so that is done now we're going to pull these veggies out of the oven. Let me get the rice. Where do I want to put this? This is always the thing, is finding a place for all the stuff. Let's put this over here. Oh, and the veggies are done. Okay, let me pull up my pants a little bit. Um, so these have been in at 425 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. I'll let some of that steam come out so I'm not burning my face. Oh, they look good. Okay, so I'm going to get some hot pads out here. Let me see. Oh, and now the smoke alarm's going off. Now, do you guys roast a lot of veggies already? I know I show it all the time because it's my absolute favorite way to cook vegetables. But is this something that y'all do, typically? Like, is this a new thing to you? Or are you, like, already on the veggie roasting train and you're like, yeah, it's the best thing ever and I always do it? Okay, so 
I could leave these in a little bit longer. I usually like them a little more brown, but for the live stream and time's sake, we're gonna do this. So this is what the mushrooms and onions look like. And then we have our peppers and squash over here. Color-wise, it probably would have been better if I had done yellow squash, just so we had a little more variety in the color, but zucchini is what I had, and it's what needed to be used up, so we just went with it. But if I was like planning this out to look exactly how I want it, I'd probably use yellow squash. Okay, let me find my spatula. Uh, here's that. Okay, so now I'm going to get a lot of squash because I love the squash. And you can see, like, this one, this is really hot. It's got a little bit of, like, crispy brownness. Whew, that's hot. Um, that's what we want with roasting because it's, I just dropped a squash on the floor. <laughs> it's got that nice, caramelized flavor. So I'm loading up with squash. I'm also going, also going to do a good amount of peppers because I like those a lot too. Oh, come on peppers. So we got the peppers. I'm going to do some of the red onion. Do a few mushrooms. Okay. And now I'm going to do my other stuff. So Oh, Nita says she is a big fan of the roasted veggies. So I'm going to put on a little bit of my fresh tomato. Actually, a good deal of the fresh tomato because I love tomatoes. Um, so we have a spoon for that. I'm going to put on some of the cucumber. Again, not one of my faves, but I do really like it in this type of meal. Got some cucumber in there. Um... I am going to do some basil later when we actually get ready to eat, but i got to go out in the garden and pick that, so pretend the basil is here. And also, I'm going to do the sausages, um, heat those up right before we eat so they're nice and hot. So I'm going to put that in here, and then I'm putting some sriracha on top. So we'll just do a little drizzle of that. Okay, so here we go. Here's the finished rice bowl. As you can see, we've got the rice down the bottom, which you can't even really see at this point. Um... And then all the veggies on top, and then again, I'll have, have the sausage, and I'm going to sprinkle some fresh basil. But that's how this type of meal comes together. And everyone gets to go and customize it, and it's really great. So I hope you guys found this helpful watching this and you enjoyed it. I am going to um, get ready to eat dinner with Jason, and then I have a class I have to go to at the gym. So it might be kind of a little close, but I think I can do it. I hope you guys are having a great morning or evening or afternoon whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. I really love doing these live streams and hanging out with you guys. And I will see you again in my next video. Bye.